Have fun. All right. Good morning. It may be a small crowd, but it's a great, great day. This weather has been beautiful. Um, busy time of year, proms, open houses, Mother's Day, birthdays. It's like, how can all so many things wrap up in one weekend? We've had a lot going on, um, but it's all good, all fun. So I'm just going to start with just saying happy Mother's Day to every mother out there. And whether you have um, born a child naturally or not, we know women are made in the image of Christ, and he is male and female. It says that in Genesis that, um, that God created us, and we are in his image. So there is a part of God that is female, and that is where the nurturing comes from, um, the love, the caretaking. I immediately thought of nurses when I was praying the last couple days over this, teachers, um, child care workers, it doesn't matter. I mean, so many, so many atmospheres of um, where, our, where we're employed by or what our job titles are, our, our mom's hearts come out. I know, especially for the daycare, um, I've hired a few teens this last week and they have some amazing mother's hearts. One's 14 and one's 18, and it's like, whoa, <laughs> I'm excited for them to start the daycare. Um, it's going to be good for the kids. And, and our, our moms, moms who are there, our older ladies, they all have mother's hearts. And that's the main thing I look for in hiring is because those little ones need a mom for the day. That's the purpose of them being there. So anyway... I love the mother's heart of God. I do see it in many men. That may sound funny to some of you men. Men are strong and mighty, but uh, my brother, for one, has more of a mother's heart than some women. So, um, right, Tracy? You know him. So, anyway, uh, men can have that part of God. He is not girly at all. He is a man's man, <laughs> but he has a mother's heart for his children, and um there are several here that know him well and could attest to that. Um, anyway, thank you all for being wonderful mothers, whether it's um, the mother's heart of God coming through a male or female. How about that? We thank you for that. So when Jason asked me to bring the word today, oh, you guys, I'm typically, I need two or three weeks, really, just with my life and how I know how I get things together. But... Um, Wednesday night, <laughs> I came in here in prayer, and I opened the word, and here it was, Jeremiah 33. And so let me give a little backdrop, not giving a lot, but how many knows here that we all were born in the image of Christ, and we have come into a fallen world? And it does say in the word that all of us have fallen and fall short. So... Needless to say, all of our moms, us as moms, we've, we bore that baby into this earth, and we wanted the best for that baby. We didn't want one bad choice coming from that baby. <laughs> Fathers, too. You know, we want to raise our kids right. We want to do everything right. That's how my heart was. And in reality, that's just not the perfect world, <laughs> right? So... When the Lord, um, that was on my heart right away, and the Lord brought me to this scripture, and um, I'll get to it here in just a second. So what he, I'll read it. The background is how the Israelites and the people of God had turned from him and had fallen away and done some really crazy wrong things. Not righteous living by any means, but things that were against God. So sins, transgressions, iniquities. So 33, Jeremiah 33, I'm going to start in 6, because, no, I'm, I'm going to, you may have it 6 on there, but I'm going to start a little earlier, um, so I'm not going to go over the whole, I'm not going to go into what 32 is about, you all know, we can all imagine what sin and transgressions and iniquities happened, we'll leave that there, so this here in verse 2, thus says the Lord who made it, 
the Lord who formed it and established it. And he's talking to Jeremiah. Um, it says, the Lord is his name. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Which I have always loved that scripture. And um, how much I have prayed that over people I love, whether it be my children or other family members. And then verse 4. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the houses of this city and the houses of the kings of Judah, which have been pulled down to fortify against the siege mounds and the sword. They come to fight with the Chaldeans, but only to fill their places with dead bodies of men who I will slay in my anger and my fury. All for those wickedness, I have hidden my face from the city. So the Lord stopped me there and... We know they're talking about Jerusalem and, and the old cities back in the day. But my heart is for the heart in the city of Martinsville. And always has been in intercession and prayer. Let me read on. Behold, I will bring the city health and healing. I will heal them and reveal to them the abundance of peace and truth. I will cause the captives of Martinsville and the captives of Israel to return and will rebuild the places as it was first. I will cleanse them from all their iniquity, which they have sinned against me, and I will pardon all their iniquities, which they have sinned and by which they have transgressed me. Then it shall be to me a name of joy. Now, me and Jessica Rose did not get together. <laughs> I had no idea what she was going to speak or what God, by the Holy Spirit, put on her heart. But God wants Martinsville to be a place of joy, of praise, honor, and that it go before all the nations. And I don't know about you, but what the Lord was showing me in this is our land gets defiled by the the ways that we sin, right? And that's that you could go back, clear back. The land's defiled by our sin. So I felt the Lord quickly bring to me how we just need to be encouraged, whether it's people in our families we're praying for, people in our uh, workplace, that we do not back down from intercession and praying for them and releasing what God has for this region, that their sin would be quickly repented of, they would turn away from it, they would go forth in what the call of God is on their life. That's how our land is going to become joyful, a place of praise, a place of health and healing. And as I read that, immediately the Lord reminded me, years ago I met for seven years in a row, every Tuesday, with about four or five other ladies, and we would just start out the morning by prayer, and we would just go, and we would do what God said to do for our region. And there were many times it was um, redeeming the land, and you can buy the book on Amazon, and it's about the communion elements. It's about oil, salt, um, what else? Water, which what's Martinsville known for, our mineral water. So we would, we would redeem the land in various places that he would take us to. Um, even when he sent me to Haiti in 2001, the first six or seven times I visited Haiti in a 10-year period, it was all about the land. I never cried over the condition of what the people lived in. He had me strategically for months prepare, and it was all about the land. And I would type up scriptures as prayers and we would redeem areas of the region of Haiti we would go to and um, I'll tell you the last time we did it we had held a cleansing stream retreat in St. Louis Denard but we had hiked earlier in the week eight hours to a couple of villages that they had never even seen white people so in that trip that was one of my last trips for about a five-year break and we had redeemed the land. They were then after that, we're going to take nursing teams in. So it was a real neat um, plan. And um, we were just crying out for God to do what he needed to do 
for that region. If, if many of you don't know, Haiti years ago um, dedicated their land to Satan. And so the like a pig is their mascot, I guess you could say. But um, my very first trip in, and I'm a, I'm a big discerner and feeler, so we landed, and you could feel the evil in the atmosphere, but God's presence was so much stronger. So I loved being there because it was just like an open heaven that you're in, but yet the evil is prevalent very much so. So um, I was going to say this. So the last trip in, I had probably been in there four or five times when we'd done this cleansing stream retreat. And the cleansing stream retreat is about getting our hearts and souls healed, so, souls restored. How many here from Hoosier Harvest years ago or even in our region just attended it? We, we end up being a regional retreat to where many people from area states would come. It was a powerful ministry. So after that, I remember going home. And it wasn't a week later, I turn on, it, and I've never had the time really to watch TV, and it was a Christian, I don't know if it was TBN or another Christian station, but I stopped because the woman said that they had been in Haiti and how one of the planes with 12 um, witch doctors and whatever else they call the voodoo people, had crashed into a side of a mountain and I was just, I just caught my attention. It was like the spirit of the Lord just wanted me to like stay and listen. And um, I really sensed, and not only did our team go in for, for God to clean the land up, many others have been going in is what I'm hearing this lady talk of. And um, so and not that these people, God knows if they're going to get saved or not. Obviously, we know that. And we never, ever prayed, God, kill these people. That was never, ever our prayers. Our prayers were everything from the word of God. So I wanted to make that clear. But he was showing me a picture of in the natural, something changed. And something took place different in that region. And this was the north coast of Haiti is where we would visit. Um, so... You know, we go and do things out of obedience and sometimes don't know what the outcome is. And I would have never, ever known if I didn't flip through the channels that day. I would never know that that plane accident happened. And, um, you know, there's, there's others. There's um, one which doctor, I remember we first went in and he was putting curses on or trying to, whatever, the Americans that were walking through. It's this one area you had to always walk through, and it was his region, his area. And um, they, they wrote back and said, hey, can you guys be praying for this witch doctor in this area, which I knew exactly what, what they were talking about. And um, we got praying, a team of us, and it wasn't a month later he had fallen off a huge rock that he would stand on and went into the river and died. Um, again, we never asked the Lord to take him out or anything, but for God to obviously release his angels and move in, in war on the Christian's behalf. There are many Christians in Haiti, uh, many, many, many God-fearing people in Haiti, great hearts. So all that to say, when I was sent in, it was all about the land. Now, after the earthquake, the next time I went in, then my heart broke for the people. And that was after 2010, I believe. So um, then we started the food program. But all that to say, our land is defiled by the sins of the people. And so to be encouraged to keep pressing in, let's pray for the ones that we know aren't living for the fullness of God. Let's see God start changing their lives to where they can get saved. They can repent. They can be doing the call of what they're to do. Every one of us have a, has a call from the Lord. And let's see joy. Um, just like the water here. God said we knew there was a prophet that come to town 30 years ago, probably 28 years ago. And he spoke and said God was going to redeem what was stolen. And healing would take place by water. And, you know, we're thinking in the natural when we heard this in the meeting 
well, how are these wells going to be cleaned up and opened again? You know, where we're just naturally thinking of the wells that were contaminated, um, but that's not how God has chosen to do it. Obviously, now we've done this for four years, and we're seeing much healing, much restoration in people's lives. Um, miracles happen. It's amazing. So it's just us following God, just doing what we are feeling his lead is, and um, the joy of seeing the lives that people change is just remarkable and just keeps us in awe because that has been our hearts from day one is the freedom of the lives of the people. And it's only because it's going to bless our region. That's what it's about. When we all get on the same page, last week we had that awesome altar call, um, the people that yearned to have the Holy Spirit, and that was nothing planned. That was just Holy Spirit orchestrated. Just to even hear in one week's time what those 15 people have done and what they feel the Lord's leading them to was, is amazing. It's just like fire in their bones. <laughs> And Julie, for one, she's like, I just feel alive. I, and, and she's had not such a great health report, you know. So God, I mean, he's just amazing when we go forth in his ways. So that's my encouragement about that, about um, for the moms and everybody. If God puts somebody on your heart, go for it. Read the word over their life. Um, minister to them out of grace and love. So, I think I've said a lot already. Um, Jason teased me and said, you probably only be 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> All right. What I want to share real quick, the, the enemy comes to... Um, destroy our souls. That's what the word says. He comes to destroy our souls. And we know, it seems like every time I'm up here, I have to hit on the soul, the mind, will, and the emotion. Jesus came to restore our soul, right? The enemy may come after us. It doesn't matter what you've done, how you've fallen as a mom, as a grandma, as a person. Let's get back up, not believe the lies of condemnation, that you have to stay in that. Repent quickly, go forward, press on, get in the word, get in the water, get renewed, <laughs> get recharged, and get out and do what you're supposed to be doing. But God is the one who wants to capture our souls. So if there's anyone here that has been praying for a loved one, a family member, a coworker, I would just like us all to stand and let's just release that God, I don't know if, yeah. Let's just, this is all we have to say. I don't, it doesn't have to be loud. It doesn't have to be weird. Just that Jesus capture so-and-so soul. Whoever it is you may have on your heart, it is by the Holy Spirit. We know Jesus wants every person saved. God, it's his grace and mercies. He's not returning yet. God is not sending Jesus back because he wants more people, more people for his kingdom. So it is by his love and his grace that he captures their soul. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for this time. Lord, I thank you for um, how you want this land healed here in Martinsville. I thank you, Father, for the people coming to you in the full uh, knowledge of salvation in our region. We are excited, Lord, for the joy to be restored in our streets, for the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, Lord, the voice of the bride, that we praise you, Lord, that you, God, are good and your mercy endures forever. Father, we give you all right to capture the hearts of our loved ones. We bind the enemy who comes after the souls of the people for destruction. And we send forth you, Jesus, to go and capture the hearts of our loved ones, that they can walk in the fullness of salvation. They can be a part of what you're doing in the end day work. Father, your kingdom come, your will be done in these lives. 
the ones who need healing, Lord, I ask that you go forth and heal and touch. The salvation, they would just call out to you. Lord, I thank you for the young man two weeks ago that came forward, a college student, didn't even know if he did the prayer right. Lord, to you, it doesn't matter. There's no right prayer. It just says, call on me, Jesus. You say, call on to me, call on to me, and I will save you. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this place. Since February, Lord, it's been spontaneous. People coming in the doors, people wanting baptized, people renewing their salvation, rededicating their lives, people seeking you. Lord, we cannot thank you enough for what you're doing. And we just release, even in the daycare children, Father, you put this on my heart this morning, that every child that walks in, Holy Spirit, capture their heart, no matter what goes on at home. I thank you, Father, for several of the families' marriage restorations that at the beginning of the daycare opening, they were going towards divorce, and now they're still together nine months later. I thank you, Father, for the prayers that you hear of us ladies and others in their own families. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing. And then that daycare will be a place of healing as well. Lord, we curse the word autism over the lives of these young children. Father, that you, Holy Spirit, would capture these children's heart. You would capture their identity, that the enemy will not come into this place, whether the daycare or this, this church, with autistic labels. I can't stand the false labels that these children are beginning to wear. Holy Spirit, go before and capture their heart and call them by who you say they are and heal them, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all glory and praise. Let this encourage us that it's never too late to pray. It's never too late to intercede. It's never too late to see Martinsville be restored to joy, actually health and healing, a, known, a city known of mineral water that heals bodies. Do it again, Lord, and we thank you for what we've seen, even a small portion of four years. Continue, Lord, to do it and have your way. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Pastor Shelley. Can you, can you tell the women how you deal with, on a daily basis, you know, our children, you know, not being in a right place, how we would like to see them? How do you deal with that on a daily basis, and how do you pray, and how do you intercede for your children, our children, so they can know kind of how to kind of let things run off their back? like the water on the duck's back, but also be able to pray for the children yeah. as well, the two different mindsets you have to have in, in ministry to your own. Well, I feel like just as you were saying that, just to release a gift of grace upon every person that could hear my voice, because it truly is a gift of grace that God has put on me that things really don't bother me. And it I don't know if that's good or bad. It's not that I don't get upset or I don't get hurt. It's just I don't deal with it like probably most people deal with it. And I don't know what that is other than a, a gift of grace. Um, I don't know. Ask for a gift of grace. Receive that gift of grace. And, and then, even in the place of your heart that when you're hurt, you always use the word, find something that... A couple of those books I shared about last last time I preached, um, Prayers That Availeth Much. There's some awesome books, even more than that. There's some awesome books of intercession, and they're uh, paragraphs by topic. And so if you have an issue with someone in your family, and it's all the Word, so or get in the Word and let the Lord show you. I mean, I used to type pages and pages of prayers up for Haiti as a for my team, it was powerful, like you saw the effect, you know, quickly. And it's his word never returns void. So that's the key. When you're praying his word, and obviously by praying in the Holy Spirit as well, your spiritual language, that goes right to the throne room, and the enemy can't come in and do any crazy stuff because he don't even know what we're saying. 
So it's a safe way to pray. But just to pray his word over situations and ask God to grace you with his gift of grace and mercies, that you can walk in this life in confidence and not have things strike us. We cannot, as a body of Christ, continue to stay downtrodden, um, condemnation coming on us, uh, not even a pitiful, poor pitiful me attitude, but things do happen in life that can destroy us, but somehow we get through it. You know, God is using the water. He uses the altar. I don't know. We had three grown men that have sat in chairs when Talia sang and was delivered from a 30-year addictions of whatever. I mean, no one touched him. No one, they didn't go forward. You know, God's just moving how he wants to move. So we just need to receive what he has for us and then walk this life out the best we can out of grace and love. But it's always the scripture, even with the children, even for my coworkers. And we don't have time really to get together as a team huddle and pray. It's, we are doing prayer and releasing stuff as we are working with these children, right? <laughs> so um, it's just how he's taught me. I don't know what else to say. Um, and I have the utmost confidence that every one of our five sons will come into the full things of the Lord. Not that they don't know the Lord or love the Lord, not that that's not true. It's just we know as parents there's more for our kids, we know that. We know there's more. We sit out here and we're, we know there's more for you, you, and you, and you because it's in us for you, you know. God is so good and has so much for his children. And um, in our grandchildren, we see things. We have three adopted. You know, there's some junk that comes along with adoption. It doesn't mean we just toss them out. Like, you know, we, we, we strive and make time and pray and release the word over these children. Many of them, they've all been in the water, um, need to get in more. But we're seeing the hand of the Lord on situations. So that, is, that would be what I would share um, the most. Also for the ladies, uh, if you're female, be sure to grab a gift before you leave. Carlene and a couple of the ladies will have a little surprise for you guys. We just want to honor um, whether you're a natural mom or not. It doesn't matter. Y'all... Y'all are awesome, and um, we love what you do as moms. And don't we love that heart, that part of God, his heart as a mother, you know? And then we love, obviously, Father's Day coming up, the heart of the Father. Um, that's a whole nother sermon for next month, I guess. But thanks so much, guys, for listening and Hope you gleaned something, and let's just be agreeing together for our land. And, um, yeah, let's, I, I'm excited to continue to see God stirring. I could, I could share some things about Martinsville and some things I know that have happened, but, you know, why go to the depressing stuff when we know the joy and the, um, the celebration and the fullness of healing is coming to the people of our, re of our land. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's stand. If you don't know Jesus this morning, today is the day. Come and know him. Again, as Pastor Shelley said, there's no specific words you have to pray. It's just your heart posture is what it is. Have your heart's posture. You could come. You, 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 you could come and just say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And it doesn't matter because where your heart's postured is what matters. You have to have your heart postured in the right way. And it doesn't matter what words you say. He'll hear that heart posture. Job was perfect and upright. And I know he did some things that were not right. But he was perfect and upright because of his heart posture. That's why God labeled him that way. David was a man after God's own heart because of his heart posture, not because of his actions, because we can look at all the things that he did and go, man, that guy was worthless. Some people don't even want to talk about him because of some of the stuff he did. But he was a man after God's heart because of the posture of his heart. We can mess up and still have a good posture for the heart of God. So if there's anyone here that's not saved this morning, come forward and let's pray with you.
If there's anyone here that needs to rededicate their life or just grab something deeper, come and pray. God is here. He's here. Pastor Shelley, thank you for that message this morning of redeeming the land. It's going to go right along with the life series of what we have to do to accomplish what God is doing in this region. This is a have to. This series is going to be so important that we have to do these things in order to accomplish what God has for us. It's going to be an amazing time. And so, again, during this series, I'm going to have, for the four days, I'm going to have um, come early. We have prayer at 10 o'clock, but come even before that. We're going to have some breakfast stuff out in the morning, some coffee out in the morning for out in the lobby. So come early, mingle, and then come in and pray with us as we press in to see what God's going to do for these next four weeks. And then Father's Days after that, and then we're going to see what we can do there. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord, right now. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings. Thank you for wives that are powerful, Lord. We thank you for moms that are powerful, that love children deeply, Lord. We thank you for moms that, that have struggled and battled with their kids, that they've overcome that, Lord. We thank you that your word says that it would not come back void what we teach our children, Lord. So where we've messed up, you've made up. Where we've messed up, you've filled in the blanks and you've filled in those spots. So, Lord, let us never feel any condemnation for those things. Let us never feel the things that are of the enemy, but feel the things that are of truth and are of you, Father. So we thank you for that right now. And we glorify you. We praise you. And everyone said... Amen. Hallelujah. Have a great week.